All right, what's up everybody? We are back in the kitchen where the games are made. Uh, we decided to make a video about our back training session yesterday. Um, because why not? Because why not? Um, back something that I really need to focus on for myself to bring up. Um, and you know, everyone can use a good looking what's back. That, what's that saying the kids have these days about shows and backs? And shows are one from the back. That's the one. Shows are one from the back. All right. Yeah. Um, and as a real quick aside, you'll notice on our channel, I say it's like faith and fitness, and I definitely, if you see other videos I've done, I talk a lot about my faith, and that is still the driving force in everything that we do. It is very important to us, and I will make more videos about that. However, that tends to be a little bit more complicated than working <laughs> out. Um, if I make speak disinformation about working out, then you know what a big deal. Is, you know, some bro thinks I'm an idiot. Uh, but if I speak bad theology, that makes that's me a, a her heretic. Uh, and possibly could jeopardize someone's salvation. So that's a little bit more of a big responsibility. But I will get back to doing that. Um, and I will tell you that I think about bodybuilding about one to two hours a day, and then the rest of the time I am thinking about theology. As soon as I'm done editing and posting this video, I'll be back to doing Transition that. Time. Yeah, absolutely. So anyways, uh, we'll be doing more of that. So uh, back day, our training style of every muscle group is incredibly simple. Yeah, I mean, we're really consistent with what we do. We believe in, you know, just simple. You're common uh, compound lifts, um, lifting heavy, um, to each his own, you know, but this is really what works for us. And, and as a whole, it's what works for bodybuilders. Yeah. Like I, I will say if, if you're the type of person or somebody's out there that likes having a different program or a program that changes every so many weeks, we talked about this before, like more power to you. I don't doubt that it could be effective. Like I'm not denying the efficacy of those types of programs, but I am denying the necessity. And um, so like muscle confusion, like yeah. Your muscles We're, don't get confused. They don't get confused. <laughs> um, we've lifted this way. I mean, I'm at freaking 15 years, okay, and I'm still changing and growing. So yeah, and the other thing I would say, like, if anybody watches my videos, our videos, and wants to be like form police and correct me, like, I really don't care. You know, I, I'm sure I could be doing everything better, but for me to like count tempo, rep tempo, and be uber strict and all that, I'm not saying it wouldn't necessarily be more effective. What I'm telling you is, I wouldn't enjoy it. Like, I'd rather get a root canal. Um, and this is this needs to be an enjoyable process. Yeah. Here's some free advice that's worth every penny that I'm charging you. When it comes to diet and nutrition, find what you're gonna be able to stick with the yes. longest and most consistently. And when it comes to your training or exercise regimen, find something that you either enjoy the most or at least hate the least. So, exactly. that being <laughs> said, um, and the other thing is about, we talked about this on our last video, keeping everything the same. It, it allows you to track progress, strength, yeah performance and all that. If you're so. doing something different every day, every week, I mean, like, how do you know if you're improving? Yeah. Like, you've got to have a little bit of consistency. So, and that being said. small variables are only. So, we'll get right into the workout. So, we actually started this. Now, most of our workouts are pretty much um, formatted the, the exact same. We may change little details here and there, which we'll talk about as we go on. Today, my lovely bride um, decided to start with rear delt flies. Yeah, so um, rear delts will either do a move to start or we'll finish with them. Uh, today we actually did both. Um, rear delts are something that you really require a lot of mind and muscle connection. Um, I, I believe that they're more of a high rep muscle. They're really small, so you can't put a lot of weight on them. Um, and we started with them to just really focus in and, and fatigue them right away and get the most out of them. So the movement is? Uh, rear delt flies was what we did. Yeah, on the machine you can do them with a dumbbell. Um, keeping your arms extended through them, think about coming back through your elbows and just really squeeze them into that little muscle right back there. Well, little on me, but on her. <laughs> uh, one interesting thing about this prime machine that we use, you can adjust mm -hmm. the settings uh, for where the tension hits in the movement. Kira, would you like to tell them about yeah, that? Yeah, I would love. Um, so I adjusted it so the tension really hits more in the end range, so back here, so you're starting up here, you finish back here, um, and it's basically uh, prevents you from recruiting a lot of the traps because if it's heavy up here um, you're gonna bring those traps and so it's a little bit lighter and then as you come back the traps aren't able to engage and you can really squeeze through the rear delt and use them as the working muscle. She swings those arms I gotta watch out uh, because I'll tell you this when we do them on like a traditional uh, pet deck that doesn't have that adjustment I will stop my rep probably yeah. like, you know, two thirds, short. three quarters of the way short to prevent engaging the traps and rhomboids. Um, but those are a great way to hit um, the rear delt. So the next thing we go to now, a lot of uh, my back training ideology came from Dorian Yates. 
Um, I think most people will agree with me that he built a decent back <laughs> in his career. Um, and one thing that he was big on is really your more wide grip movements tends to develop more upper back and, and shoulders. And he said that if you look at a lot of the bodybuilders today, they have a lot of upper back development, but the lower lats, the meat and everything, that thickness and density is lacking. So I took that to heart. So pretty much everything we do that's targeting the back itself, especially for me, is uh, no more wider than shoulder grip or shoulder width. Um, and so this, we started with the- um, Close grip prime. Well, it's a reverse grip, yeah. kind, of, kind of medium grip. Uh, prime, this allows you to articulate different angles with your hands. I prefer the supinated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's reverse grip for all you uh, uninitiated out there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, pull down, and to, again, you can just really drive the elbows down nice and effectively. Um, I, this is a great machine, uh, the piece of the gym we have. The other, like we go to another gym, we have a Nautilus one that we can actually use unilaterally, so that's really nice as well. Or you can use just a cable bar and have it, you know. Yeah. But First the fundamental on. movement stays it's the exact the same. same regardless. Um, and, and again, usually with back, it's like eight to 12 rep range um, for failure. Um, and I only do at this point, and I'm to this point planning on in my off season even, only one working set to failure to cut down on the volume. I think that's gonna be best for me to grow. Psycho over here oftentimes likes to do a working set and then she feels the need to do a back off set. So I can explain that though. So this psycho, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm like stupid strong on a lot of stuff. Um, so it, I feel like if I can fatigue the muscle with that heavy weight, then I, I reduce the weight and I can just get a much better mind and muscle connection and really use that muscle group to its fullest. Um, but if I were to start with that like lighter weight and create that mind and muscle, I just, it, it doesn't fatigue the muscle. So that's, that that's, what, and, and that's what I'm going with. Okay. Could, could be right, could be wrong. So what, work, what works for me. It has nothing to do with uh, masochistic tendencies that's and it. feeling like you need to do, always do more. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just as long as we're on the same page. All right. Um, so next we move to the prime uh, machine row. Um, okay. So. With rows, I do chest supported ones like uh, you'll see here and you could do like laying, a lane one where you're laying on a bench. Um, the reason for that is I want to recruit as little of my core as possible because I already have a larger, wider waist. Um, so just using it as, as little as possible and working the back. Now I love barbell rows. I think everyone should do barbell rows where you're bent over. Um, it's what's going to put a lot of size on the back or muscle and it's, it's going to utilize it to its fullest. Barbells build thickness. They do. Um, so, and, and a lot of girls in my category do them, but I have a, I have a bigger waist. And so, and not to say that it, they're really going to make my waist much larger, but every millimeter matters if i can shave one of those off my waist it can make a huge difference for me so that's that's the reason for that and so that's an area like when i get into my off season right now i'm just kind of cruising because it really is all about her for the next few weeks when we get her ready Love for tampa it. right <laughs> um it, it always is happy wife happy life sure. so uh i'll go back to barbell rows um when i get into my off season or when i start really trying to grow again so we still train together but sometimes our our movements will will vary just depending on personal need and that's very important important too because um, I don't want my needs or my preference of training for something to hold her back and then vice versa so you got to be flexible that's that's how marriage works really yeah, I think. it's a give and take yeah, we should start a marriage yeah, counseling yeah. service yes. okay so next we move on to pull-ups these we eat is actually a prime example of um, us doing it a different way I like to do a close supinated grip for my pull-ups for the reasons previously mentioned and I do a wider grip like you said, it develops the upper back more. I need more upper back. Um, and then I feel it more in, in my lats a little bit wider. So I, I'll take every little bit of width I can get up there. And that's also important when looking at program design, um, feel, uh, I talked about enjoyment, um, but that's something that nobody who's structuring a program for you can, uh, you can't measure it, you can't quantify it. But so if something feels better for you, then do it. It doesn't matter. Like I don't barbell squat. It doesn't feel good for me. It's not a good movement for me. Um, so I just don't do it. I know that's, you know, that's committing gym heresy. Um, but, but I don't do it. I don't yeah. like it. I mean, everybody's body is different and it's mechanically different. It moves different. You've got different movement patterns, whatever. So you really, it is very individual and you've got to 
pay attention to it and do what feels right for you, what feels best. And that's another area, like with her, it, we may do a leg training video at some point where for to barbell squat, she can easily load up 315 and ride out. So um, that is where her strength can be a detriment to her. And it, again, mm -hmm. we don't want to pick in the core any more than absolutely necessary. So that's just a, a fun fact as well. Um, then we go to a close grip uh, pronated, that's overhand. Ah, yeah, pronated. supinated, pronated. Mm -hmm. So there's your anatomy lesson for the, way, for the day, and I'm speaking Latin for you. Um, cable rows, this is another area where we will kind of tweak the grip here and there, just no really rhyme or reason, just like what do we feel like doing today? So sometimes we will go supinated, sometimes we will go neutral. Um, but with these prime handles that are They're adjustable, amazing. yeah, these are really, these and the mag grips are just phenomenal tools to have in your arsenal. Um, for back training. So if your gym doesn't have them, they're not that expensive to order. And I, done it. Yeah, they're de yeah, they definitely are worthwhile. So close grip cable rows, again, eight to 12 reps, one set to failure. I'll do like one warm up set. This is really, I want to just thicken up the middle back as much as possible. For my physique, what I need is um, I'm very tall and tend to be kind of slender. So I need dimension, thickness front to back. So that's really what I'm looking to get here out of the cable rows. Um, also, saving these more towards the end when you are fatigued for someone like her it allows her to use a little bit less weight and again that these aren't core core, core intensive but but it's still there, it's it's still still there. you know you're still having to resist the movement so that's another another fun fact there um and then this is a new move that we've just put in recently um to help her a lot the dumbbell pullovers yeah so um you can do it with a, a cable a machine um, there's pullover machines, a few gyms have them. It's kind of like an, an old school piece. So it's hard to find a good one. Um, but we just started doing it with the, the dumbbell. Um, and I love it because I can get a really, really good stretch, get the arms behind me, feel it in the, in the front part of my lats. Um, and then as you come forward, thinking about keeping the arms uh, long and kind of coming up through the elbow and just, I almost internally rotate and then squeeze. and. Really just, again, we're trying to get some width in my back um, and they feel phenomenal. The other thing, because I'm a genius, is that what I feel like with dumbbell rows where you miss versus no, doing the machine. Yeah, that's what, that's what I meant. You said rows. Well, whatever, whatever, I don't know what I mean. No. Sorry, America. You said confused you. Anyways, it's muscle confusion. <laughs> now I'm confused. So where you, the difference with the, with the machine pullovers is that you can keep tension throughout the entirety of the movement. And the one thing I feel like where dumbbell and barbell pullovers limit you is that you can lose tension at the top. So what I did, a genius. I did, and I said, let's go grab some bumper plates and actually elevate. Look, the decline bench was taken at the time. Yeah. Trust me, I'd much rather not you know, hack the gym. <laughs> But I, I elevated the uh, the foot of the bench so as to put it at a decline, so you're less apt to lose tension at the, at top. the top of the movement. Because if you're on a flat bench and when you get that dumbbell up overhead, well now it's just like it's just your arms are extended; they can be locked out. Like you just lose tension up there. So if you still got that weight being pulled back, you're able to maintain it in and the lats. I would go into the physics of calling the fulcrum and levers and all that, but uh, I today. don't really know it. Uh, so I would just confuse myself and look like a moron. Suffice it to say, it works. Me and it, it felt good, yeah. Uh, bro science. Bro science. So um, then we went back and finished our last move. And so as far as total number of moves for our, our back in rear delt day, um, this is always pretty much gonna be the same. Five back, two yeah. rear delt. And so, you know, the, the rear delt in the back, uh, for the most part, all is like pulling the shoulder back, scapular retraction. So I like also hitting the high rows from that angle in addition to the fly that we almost, that we already did. Um, so we just use cables here. This sometimes will switch uh, some, some prime handles, um, rope, we'll do dumbbells. dumbbells. I mean, so this is where we get to playing around with some variables, but like the meat and potatoes of the workout same. still stays the same. So these are nice, you don't go do heavy here where you can get a nice squeeze at the back and almost feel like, it, it, kind of mimicking the motion of like when you come to a front double bicep. I just think of pulling the handles apart and that really hits the rear delts, yeah. just pull it apart. And then like sometimes, uh, like if she wasn't filming me, um, just put like her finger, I'll put my finger in the middle of her back so then it gives you that physical cue to just kind of squeeze and, and retract the shoulder blades and think about squeezing the finger, not pulling the finger. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, I know, right? I'm here all day. Um, I got dad jokes with no kids. <laughs> So anyways, and then we moved on to biceps. So we do, we do two moves for biceps here? Correct. Yeah. Uh, we started with, I, it's, I guess it's basically like a drag curl. Um, you got the cables behind you and try keeping the, the bicep part of the arm still. 
and just squeezing it or dragging it forward uh, for our Latin guy over here. It hits the brachial radialis, which is what really just gives the arm. Sounds so good. <laughs> Gives the arm a little dimension um, in your rear double bicep. Um, it's back here, and yeah. And also, when you have your arm or your uh, the hands and elbows position behind the shoulder, you can eliminate or minimize at least the, the recruitment of the shoulder. So you're really trying to isolate the uh, the bicep in that stretched out position. Yeah, but I I really like those. Again, this is something will vary. Sometimes cables. Sometimes we'll do drag curls, um, but this, this staple movement is, is pretty much always in there. Um, and then we finish with dumbbell curls. Dumbbell curls. We did two different ones. Um, I do hammer. Um, it hits the forearm a little bit more than your traditional curl does. Um, and it just feels good to me. Like I get a great pump, a great mind and muscle connection with it, an excellent squeeze. I think it's a very underrated, awesome type of curl. And I, I prefer just a traditional um, grip. Uh, when I go neutral to do a hammer curl, it just I kind of get aggravation in this area, whatever that. So like we said, pay attention to your body. Yeah. It works for you. So works you know, and I can get a little bit more of a supination, a little bit more of a contraction. Um, so same, we're doing the same thing. We're still training together, but we're able to modify it in ways that, that tailor our physique the best. And uh, that was it. We finished up with 15 minutes of cardio on the stairs. Yeah, and really cardio. Uh, post workout, I believe in it after you work out, not start. Um, and it's really, it's a great way to take waste away from the muscles and bring nutrients to it and just get that blood flow and some fat burning and all that good stuff. But you, you don't need anything. Yeah, exactly. You don't need a ton, but you know, 15, 20 minutes post workout. Also, I feel like. Um, it gets closer to mimicking like a fasted cardio where you deplete yeah. a lot of the muscle glycogen. Um, and then so, yeah, trying to get more out to burning fat. Um, and the other thing we do right now, and, and we pretty much do throughout the off season, although we may break from it a little bit, is do some posing afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, if you are a competitor, if you compose when you're tired, um, you pose on stage. Yeah, it's the best way to mimic that um, and just drill those poses in. I think it's pretty much muscle memory and, and I always do mine too. I'll, I'll hit like 20, 30 minutes after my fasted cardio in the morning. Um, and again, just creating that muscle memory. It's going to help with your conditioning yeah. so much and you're not going to be tired on stage. You're going to you're just going to be a statue up there. And, and just pulling, yeah, pulling everything that you can into the muscle to make it as full and hard as possible. So that was pretty much it for our back day. Uh, I'm going to edit this video and then go back to reading. So yeah, I think is that it? That's it. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. God bless.